All right, and we are a go. So you can see we've got a brand new different map. I think it's Uluru is called. A uh, bit of lens creation, vomit. Interesting map formula here, though. The, the focus on the center for a six site victory, a lot of the relics placed there as well, should lead to some interesting gameplay. This is a crafted map, but it follows a certain rule set. Um, in theory, it should be better than just the full Mega Random, because the Mega Random like, is in the name, right? Maybe it has a little bit less competitive integrity. But welcome one and all, looks like we are caught up. So, as you can see, uh, we've got a lot of familiar faces. In fact, let me also just get rid of that. We're going to have Puppy Paw in the teal as the HRE, and his next door neighbor, just a screen away. It is the return, once again, of Numudan, playing in the yellow as the French in this game. And as we round out, we are going to see what we've got in the green. It's going to be Wham on the roost. Just to his north is going to be joined by Mr. Merlin. That's right. One of our own on the Ottomans in the red. Mr. Merlin, definitely the lowest ranked player in this lobby. Sorry to, to call it out like that, but you Aww. really are. Uh, we'll see if things go disastrously for him, though. He's our champ that we're, we're holding on to here. And as we go around, we are going to see in the pink, it's going to be Eureka on the roost, joined very closely by Avali as the Marlins. Then, of course, to the south, on his lonesome, we have got Core in a corner as the English with a vulgar amount of resources. Core has won the RNG jackpot of the spawns here, no doubt about that. And then finally, it's going to be Matisse closest to the center here on the HRE in the orange. Interesting position to take here as well, actually. Um, very lacking in the gold, as he learned the hard way. Has to pull really far away. Apologies, Reva Tuna is still showing. So let me just quickly... Turn that off. There we go. All right. Shouldn't have that problem anymore. Um, so I'm seeing uh, some, some questions around the rules. And the rules have changed a little bit from when we last cast these. But to kind of like recap it for people, remember, this is the Outback Octagon 2 rule set, which is a combination of like the free-for-all and regicide type game modes. So each player spawns with a king. This king has been changed, by the way, from the early iteration. The king does not spawn until you construct your TC now. This is to avoid awkward situations where the kings were getting stuck in tree lines and just... Well, they just wait there for their death, basically. Um, and the kings are being buffed now per age. Now, the way it works, similar to Regicide, if you lose that king, you are GG'd out of the game. But on top of that, whoever assassinates the king will get an additional... 50 maximum population cap. We've seen some insane numbers already in some of these scrims. Some people get up to 350 population, which is just absurd. It's almost a guaranteed win at that stage, unless someone else mirrors the move. Of course, remember, the sieves are random. That's going to be a consistent rule from our, our pub experiences. No one gets to choose which sieve they're going to be. And notice this. You see the king there? Look on the mini-map. Are you seeing this, folks? Nice little addition here is that the kings are very clearly seen via giant dots on the map. So whenever the kings are not garrisoned inside, they will be represented by a fat-ass blob to represent just how much pork they've eaten while the villagers starve. Tech Cup's already starting to come through. I, I still just can't believe the amount of resources Core got in his lonesome. Recon and Avalirium for a bit of a, a tough one. It seems whenever people seek corners, they just run into each other instead of running into the safe places. This is definitely a frustrating position on the Saharan Trade Network. It's going to be a little bit of return fire out of Recon. Won't be as impactful, but what it does do is it secures the tree line between them both. He maybe has a better chance to munch into this a little bit. And he still has two reserve tree lines behind, right? So if you think about this from the wood perspective, it should actually be better for Recon than it is for Avali. Downside, however, is Avali's playing as the Malians. You know, Sure, they can go for this archer mass, but I don't think they're as, as wood bound as the roosts typically are. Oh, Knight's already coming out. Numid are an absolute nuisance here. Really frustrating position for Poppy Poor. HRE typically doesn't want to fight early on. You can see they're just all about that eco booster via Narkin. In fact, it looks like Poppy Poor wanted to go for a second TC. He did gather just enough stone to enable that. Very dangerous position to find himself in, though, right? Like, look at the lack of wood he has. It's one tree line. There's no secondary place to easily drop a TC now that knights are out. You're probably going to see Puppy Paw actually have to stop off for a Rax first before he can even dream of going for a second TC drop. Unless he wants to play the HRE like the, the Chinese. Which, you know, there's a bit of a difference in Germany and China in that regard. Yeah. It's not really as if you want to, to get too compact, right? Like the big issue with the HRE compared to Chinese, Chinese can kind of afford to be more compact because they're fabricating 20% extra resources from nothing. The HRE is just 
taking limited resources 40% faster. So whenever you put two TCs on top of each other, you, you reach this awkward point where you have to flood out of your base with eco units very fast. Imidan looking like he's going to go for the multi-TC build. I'm expecting two TCs into a little bit of aggro. Then it, it gradually make up your way up to free after you address the threat at your doorstep. Your second TC already underway from Matisse. And he's going to lock in his gold with this really critical resource for him, right? Like HRE, definitely reliant on gold heavily. One of the big reasons why Matisse took this central location, by the way, it's all about the relics, baby. This gives him prime position to easily pick up three, if not four relics. Great position to find yourself in when you're playing HRE Regnus builds. And folks, this man right here, he knows the HRE inside out. Before Matisse became a prolific Roost spammer, he was in fact one of the goated HRE players of launch. In fact, he was the big innovator in the early days, coming in with the Fast Castle quad stable build. Well, someone who is going to come in fast with a white flag to surrender. Looks like Recon gives up. He tried to play for the ball on the backside and got caught off guard by the Warrior Scouts. That will now, of course, force the King to ungarrison, right? Yeah, the fat man is hiding here. This might take a while because these are just feudal age warrior scouts. And well, if you can click on the king, you can see he's a hardened king. Which, if if you're uh, a fair lady of a king of the medieval age, may mean something very different to you. But in this game mode, it simply means that the king is a lot chunkier than normal. You can see 500 health, two melee armor, four ranged armor. Not an easy kill to get. So it will take a little bit of time. But once Avli has that, he will benefit from an extra 50 population at his max cap. Of course, you won't see that until he cracks the 200 mark. Typically, Malian players do actually crack it a lot quicker. And people are asking, is there a possibility that he crashed? I don't think so. You can see he was gathering on the ball. He already took 500. The Warrior Scouts came in, and Recon had absolutely no units to defend with. This was just a GG. Speaking of GG's, it's going to be similar over here. For good reason, Wham surrenders. Not only does he have no way of breaching into the base of Mr. Merlin, but Numudan was frustrating the southern flank. So second player out in quick succession here. You can see how vile and aggressive the early phases of this map generation is. Because remember, these players are spawning the outro. They know a lot of the resources are on, on the outskirts. And a lot of them are prioritizing these corners because you know it's so much easier to defend. But if two players find themselves on top of each other, the biggest benefactor is usually someone nowhere near that. And you can see this actually played to Numidan and Puppy Paw's benefit, right? They don't actually over harass each other. Instead, they go hunting for other players. Numidan, of course, because he's got knights out here, he will be able to get the kill on the king. There was no way Mr. Merlin could contest that. Meanwhile, the land of core. Peace, prosperity, and ease of execution. Four TCs. <laughs> He's loving life. I, I honestly think, like, Kor's only downside here is he's going to need to snipe someone soon. Because if you wait too long, now you're going to start seeing, you know, you reach into that, like, 25, 30 minutes in. That's when the population advantage for, say, Numidon uh, can come in. As well as for Avali. And, of course, you do see that assassination coming through. So, guys, what, what we're noticing here is French OP, right? Especially considering that they actually have high damage units this early on in the game. The problem is, like, assassinating a king this early doesn't really help you. You're nowhere near population. But the good news is, compared to other civs, you can lock in that population. Right? Think about this on the other side, what's happening here. Where Avali has spent much longer trying to kill a king, and it's still not dead. Imagine you're next to a French player, and he just runs in and steals that kill. That's the type of advantage that these heavy cavalry type uh, civs in Feudal Age can have. I'm trying to avoid directly saying French is buffed. They kind of are. For this mode, for this specific situation. They needed something, guys. Mr. Merlin is now going to actually benefit from this removal of Wham, right? Like, Numenon's not going to try to pressure Merlin out of the game. He's too kind of boxed in. He's got plenty of spears to defend with. But now, instead of being kind of resource limited and eventually starved out, Merlin's going to get that full corner to himself. Because Numidon has other concerns on his mind, right? He has to worry about Puppy Paw on his flank. Has to choose his fights. Can't overcommit to just one. And yes, just to confirm for people, as you've been seeing, the king does immediately get ungarrisoned when you call a GG. I think there was an early iteration of this mod where they just simply disappeared and evaporated if you surrendered. But that seems to have been fixed. So the king will exist in some regard until he's eliminated, guaranteeing that someone is able to get that extra 50. 
Nice denial of the relics here. This is a cool fight actually happening in the center. Puppy Paul has yet to tech up. He's on his way with the Regnets now. And he's looking to be the blocker. Because Matisse, of course, rushed up into Castle Age as the HRE with the intent of just hoovering in all the central relics. And who is most likely to contest that is, of course, going to be the other HRE player. You can even see the Avalis posturing a little bit. Like, he's in a position to easily secure three relics as it stands. Especially considering that Puppy Paul's full attention has to go towards Matisse. The imminent threat to these relics, right? Like, Avalie will eventually try to seek them, but he's not even in Castle yet. Archers are now starting to arrive for Numidon as well. Castle is not far off for him either. A decent position to find himself in, right? If you're Puppy Paul, you can't just rush into Men at Arms here. It's a little bit too dangerous. You need to actually mass spears first. But now the archers being there, it kind of complicates the situation. Might be that you need to try and think about going knights, but notice a key issue here for Puppy Paul, lacking the food. Matisse, of course. How's his farm transition going? He's a little bit deeper in. He has got access to secondary wood line, so I, I feel a lot better about his position. No one's likely to be breathing down his neck in the next minute or two, but he has got that, that looming threat to the south. Core is just loving life right now. 76 eco, he has one military unit, is only a scout. And in the back corner, it looks like he's going to set up the White Tower. So, interesting approach here. Probably going to be going White Tower into eventually getting his second defensive landmark, right? Just get the Barkshire in the corner, and that's kind of the last resort protection for your king. Just guarantees you can more easily raid the flanks as well. And he'll definitely be able to fortify this area. I mean, the amount of stone he got to himself. Good lord. I know we don't have the Stone Age in Age of Empires. But it kind of feels like it exists in this map for him. Weirdly enough, it will be coming after Castle Age in this version of history, though. So much stone in each of these cores, to be honest. Except the left one. Like, right one, I think, got a decent amount as well. Yeah, I think it's like four stone stacks. Someone is looking to utilize those, of course, is Avalie. So he's actually starting to boom up on the TC count, adding in an additional two all of a sudden. Has got the cattle ranches going around the Grand Fulani Corral. This allowing to be more pop efficient, which is fantastic in a situation where, of course, you already have an extra 50 max to work with once you reach that cap. Well, that situation. Puppy Port now grabbing the second one. But it looks like Matisse is already up at three. I wouldn't be surprised if he's grabbing a fort from the edge, actually. If we look around. No. I, I think he actually didn't manage to grab a fort fit. So pretty good position for Puppy Port. All things considering, like, how big the difference was between them. Still really worrying to his north side here. Numidon is chilled for the moment, but now that the tech-ups come out, I expect things to ramp up. Get those veteran Royal Knights, look to dive. Get a bit of commitment going. And considering how close your main base is, you could even easily build a siege workshop here and start to try and, and brute force the TC. We'll take some time with the E-repairs. But there's no denying that Puppy Poor isn't ready to kind of fight you in that regard, right? He's at least now starting to line his coffers, though. He moved out onto the D on the left side, which I think was a, a big problem for him, right? If he was relying on just fleshing out the farms, I think it's GG. I don't know if you've got enough wood access to just do that. But luckily for him, nobody took the left corner, which is still very odd to see. Let's check in on little Molino. He's got three TCs. I actually don't mind him adding in a fort here. He's got Castle Age ready to tech up. I think you've got Castle Age plus four TCs. Just kind of extend south here, uh, around where Avalie's remains are. Just kind of consolidate around that area. Could even look to go to the east side. Would guarantee you more gold access long term. I think it's better to try and take those resources now, by the way, as opposed to draining your safe resources. That way, if another player starts to harass you, you have a fallback plan. He's going to be going up the Istanbul Imperial Palace. I don't mind this. I think a lot of people are starting to kind of like turn their heads to Istanbul a bit more. Especially considering that these type of games, this format, you're going to go a lot later in, right? So actually having those additional two Vizier points to your limit is actually going to come to fruition, right? Whereas typically you see a lot of people playing around the free siege because of the t those timing attacks. If you think about a 1v1, the Ottoman's strongest point in the game is Castle Age. So you shouldn't really reach a point where you need those extra two Vizier points, right? Versus the benefit of free siege and how potent you are at mid-castle age, usually most games are finishing before you even think about how useful this Imperial Palace will be. And, oh, hello, Matisse. Well, this is an aggressive boy maneuver. He's gone for the center of the map. This is a kill me move. I 
actually don't think you can commit to this. There's too many players left alive. Puppy Poor and Numidon are at least denting each other, so that might play to his, to his benefit. But maybe what Matisse doesn't realize is how released Aveline Court. They have their own independent corners, and they will be able to contest this probably in the next four minutes. Remember, you know, if you're in a position where two players are targeting you out, one of them is all on your flank here, right? Core has kind of free reign to flood into the main base where the king is located. Nice little wall-wall play from Merlin. Will bolster his villager force. Agro coming into the base of Puppyport is finding success. Production buildings are being torched down. Rams definitely find their impact. I actually love this play out of Numidon. I thought about maybe Trebs, but this is just faster and more efficient. Three Rams is enough to kind of like brutalize in, force quick e-repairs, and eventually breach this TC. Really, what do you have to defend with your puppy ball? It's just mass spears. You see Arbolatrie as well as Archers are ready to count on this. Night Mass is just going to commit. A bold choice here, but Numa not able to do so, and now the King on the run. Psych, he's just going to go back in. I, I don't know why he's gone back in though, folks. I, I get it from Poppy Paul, like he just doesn't have the ability to outrun these Knights. It kind of feels like, you know, hanging around here is tempting fate. Luckily for him, he has actually saved the Knights until afterwards. So once he cleans up the front line of cavalry, he'll look to push back. That will allow him to clean up these Rams and stay alive to fight another day. But the way I'm looking at this, I feel like if, if Numidon doesn't get backstabbed by Merlin, Puppy Poor is in a very awkward position. For now, he lives to fight another day. He has got this back corner still for him, right? Matisse is likely too distracted elsewhere trying to bolster the center. He's not going to come and mess with this. I'm still curious what Avalee's plan is here. Being a little bit... Um, builder. Being a little builder in the corner. That's his plan right here. It makes sense, right? Like, you know, before you go raiding out on the flanks, you want to make sure you're secure in your own base. Last thing you want is to send out 100 plus units to the other side of the map and then realize that you're being dove by, you know, 150 horsemen. So just going to play it safe here. Same with Core. He did set up the Barkshire in the end. So nicely consolidated in that corner. Two line marks next to each other. Easily repaired. Don't even need stone. And you can just do the dance back and forth when someone tries to dive onto one or the other. We are now seeing Stonewall. Stonewall? Sorry, I just can't complete that wall. Stonewall! Uh, sorry, it's, it's very hard for me to complete that word. I think what would be more appropriate is if I just um, I just play a little something so we can we can, we can can understand why Stonewalls are so so difficult to, to, to deal with. So just give me a second. Uh, it's very important you guys see this. Yeah, yeah. I love them. Oh, give me more stone walls. Oh, I can't. Oh. Okay, yeah, that, that, I think I think I got the message across about how we feel about stone walls. <clears throat> I feel like I see plenty more of them as well, considering how many people have a corner here. Puppy Pie has a perfect area. Has to, of course, deal with the resources blocking his way. But after that, he can easily kind of consolidate there. It's to his benefit to eventually do that if he's worried about Numidon threatening him, but for the time being, he's going to be one threatening Numidon. Castle is going up, and this is very beneficial. Remember, he's playing the French, so now he gets the discounts. And this is going to be very important. Are the tree really are his way of blocking this entire army out? Right, even the spearmen, you know, because the, the Arbor's damage is so high, the base damage, they're able to kind of just blitz through you. Love that Puppet Poor is going for the flank attack here. A lack of walls from Numidon, and he is being punished for it. Typical French players. They, you know, they just think that they can come out and play the map. That everything belongs to them. Not today, sir. You have to earn it. Mr. Merlin. Do I need to play the clip from Crackity again? I think I do. No, I'll, I'll leave him alone for now. We'll, cut, we'll circle back to that clip another time. And this has actually reached a very calming state. Nobody's responding to Matisse, but I think this is a mistake. Like, this is this is coordination point. I don't think it's teaming to say, guys, we should probably kill Matisse. Like, sacred site, tick, 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 tick. The walls are going up. He's almost completely surrounded it. On top of that, he's building the elves back here. I, mean, I actually think Matisse might win this with a sacred. Someone has to make a move. Cool. Bruh. You <laughs> 
Come on. You have 10k food. You've got 180 eco units. Contribute for the love of God. It's almost like everyone's expecting someone else to deal with it. You know when everyone's like, oh yeah, you know, like global warming is a problem. Yeah, someone, someone else will turn their lights off at night. It's fine. I mean, I, I like to see when I'm trying to pee, you know? That's kind of how this feels. And Poppy Paul is just over here with a, a grudge match with Numidon. Like, oh, you slap me, I slap you. Meanwhile, someone is over here robbing both your bank accounts. But sure, just let them be. And then there's Avali. This man clearly played a lot of DayZ growing up. He doesn't want to win. He just wants to survive. Avali out here being like, well, at least I get joint second. <laughs> Because we are three and a half minutes away from a Matisse victory. And the problem here, folks, is that by the time they realize that there's walls in the way, I don't think they're going to be able to get Siege in place. Okay, Mr. Merlin is being the hero that the rest of these guys do not deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to point out that Mr. Merlin is the only player in this lobby that hasn't been categorized as a pro player. And he's the only player trying to stop Matisse from winning the game with a Sacred Sight. Now, I'm not saying that these other guys need to read what a Sacred Sight does. But what I am saying is that Mr. Merlin definitely knows what they do and what that countdown means. We'll just have to see if Merlin's got the magic. Looks like Poppy Paw is willing to assist. The problem is that Poppy Paw, he has no way in. In fact, Poppy Paul, is he considering trying to dive the king? Because that's simply not going to work. They need to make a breach and they need to get in now. Remember, Matisse, he has an army behind this. Look at the size of this Lang's neck. He's got knights. A few products in there that help heal. The triple magnet. Make that five magnets. I. Oh, no. And Merlin, he didn't bring any siege. This isn't your typical Ottomans, folks. He, he doesn't have any free siege built, right? He hasn't gone for the Mehmed Imperial Armory. I don't think he even has... No, he doesn't even have Siege Engineering. Okay, please tell me you've got... Has nobody got Siege Engineering? Oh, dear God. Has nobody communicated that they need Siege? They have two minutes. Cool. Yeah, he's, he's trying to cheese it. He's trying to go for the snipe on the king. Now, th this is maybe a whoopsie-daisy out of Matisse because he did not run for safety in his castle. There still is an opportunity, though. The king does move fast, and he's on the move. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. 1.65 tiles. That is quicker than the knight. Run, you glorious little bugger. Protect me. Like you need protection, Mr. Thousand Health. <laughs> oh, Matisse is the king of the castle, and here come all the dirty rascals. That boy be moving fast. Honestly, I think someone modified this king. Someone crammed a nitrous canister up his ass because he goes zooming. Whew. Yeah, you've heard of chubby kings, but this guy definitely never skipped leg day. Uh, but I do feel like everyone else in the lobby may have skipped um, the tutorial, the part where you build the rams. They're only now coming out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is too late. This is far, far too late. You need two breach points. If there's only one, this fails because a choke point versus mangoes and lanks, you're gonna die. Castle slowing down the Seagate castle from going up. That walls can be repaired. You can see Matisse just waiting. Almost like he wants to welcome them in. Destruction on the corner. Holding the choke point. Folks, he's got enough to do this. Just needs to hold for 35 seconds. There's no secondary breach point. This is over. As long as Matisse doesn't rush out, he's good. In fact, he can use Langs on the walls here to cleave the choke point. Mango Mass clapping in. And that is it, ladies and gents. 20 seconds away. And the only person trying to go in the hole is Mr. Merlin. Everyone else is as fearful as the of the hole as, uh, I don't know, someone who's clearly watched a bit too much Hannibal Lecter. I, I am at a loss, ladies and gents. Matisse might just be a god. Everyone else might also just be ignorant. <laughs>
I... I mean, that is actually our quickest one yet. I feel as if everyone is so worried about something being categorized as teaming, they're not calling out simple stuff. Because everyone ran to the center as if someone else was going to bring siege. Maybe they just didn't know about the siege, but the, like when a sacred site is being capped, like surely you eventually like just throw out a scout, right? I mean, I gotta give it to Matisse though, man. Dude, Mat Matisse played that like a legend. He's like, okay, if everyone else just wants to boom, if everyone else just wants to be another world begin with a B, then I'm gonna be the big dog in here, right? I'm gonna be the one howling from the center. I'm gonna beat everyone while they're trying to go 200 eco units. <laughs> cool, dude. What a chat.